Ah, summer. Hot and sunny days, times of no school, hanging out with friends, and all around a fun time. But it's ant keepers know it as nuptial flight season, or a time when queen ants and drones fly out to meet. The perfect time to go out and catch a queen ant to begin your ant keeping experience. The majority of queen ants fly out in the months of June and July, but they can fly as early as February or as late as September. And a great time to go ant hunting is right after a rainstorm, as this lets the soil or sand easy for the queens to dig through to found their colony. Now what I usually do is I go out on a calm and humid night, since I find the majority of queens and drones under bright lampposts. Another good time to catch queen ants is right before the sun comes up, but if the temperature is above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, or 35 degrees Celsius, or 65 degrees Fahrenheit, or 18 degrees Celsius, I don't find as many queens, or none at all. Wind speed also takes part when nuptial flights happen, as queen ants and drones aren't the best of flyers. What I found is that there aren't as many queen ants out and about when the wind speed is above 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. But those are only based off of my experiences, so go out there and experiment in your own area. And when looking for a queen ant, you will need to know how to determine whether they are a queen or an ant at all. A brief summary on the finding queen ants and how to identify them is that queen ants have a larger thorax or the middle part of an insect and larger abdomens or bottom ends of an ant. <clears throat> See what I did there? They also have quote unquote clear wings or wing scars if they have taken theirs off. And now the wing scars are a bit tricky to identify on a queen ant that is darting around on the ground. And for example, this queen that you saw is one of the smallest species of ants and I sometimes mistake the queens as workers due to their size. And even up close, you can barely make out that those are wing scars at all. And here's a small founding colony of this species, Brachymimix patagonicus, in a test tube setup. People who are new to the world of ant keeping should always have test tube setups with them when catching a queen ant. To make one, all you need is a test tube, cotton, and water. Fill up the test tube halfway with water. and allow the cotton to be soaked up completely before adding another as the cap. The queen will stay in here until she has about 5 to 50 workers depending on the size of the ant and also the size of the test tube. Now that we've gone through when to catch a queen ant, how to identify one, and how to make a home for them, we're now ready to catch one. The easiest way that I've found when catching a queen ant is by using a piece of cotton and lightly pushing the queen onto it, making it grab the cotton. Then using that to push the queen into the test tube. Just be sure to not injure or kill the queen in the process. But sometimes the queen doesn't walk naturally into the test tube, so I use this method the most if that doesn't work. What I'm doing here is making a triangle with my hands, so that the queen will crawl onto my hand. Another method that I found that helps, is by cradling your hands together with the test tube in between. And this also allows the queen to crawl onto your hand or walk into the test tube. When catching wing queens, an easier way to catch them is by picking them up by the wings. I wouldn't recommend doing this if the queens didn't have any wings, as you can easily injure or even kill the queen. Once caught, put them into a dark and quiet place, preferably a drawer or closet. I personally leave some of my queens in a towel under my desk. But that will be all for this tutorial and I hope it has helped. Thank you for watching this far and I wish you good luck in finding any queen ants. My name is Ender Ants, another fellow ant YouTuber. Go out there and catch some queen ants, and I'm signing off once again.